So in front of me, I have the Epson Home Cinema 5050 UB. This is the Pro UHD. This is a 1080p projector with 4K enhancement. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar to that, uh, with that terminology, if you're new to the channel, um, take a look at some of the other videos where we talk about 4K and pixel shifting and how 4K enhancement works. There's lots of articles on the website. So I'm not gonna cover that too much here other than to say, when you look at this thing in motion, your eyes will see it as basically 4K, very high resolution, even upscales 1080p. So we'll get into that in just a second. If you are an owner of a previous Epson, uh, this is an Epson home theater unit that is, uh, say the 5040. The 5040 came out back in June of 2016. So this is three years now for a deluxe home theater version of the Epson that a lot of people have been waiting for. This is the step up, this is the 5050. So what a lot of you guys wanna know is how does it compare to that unit? What's different about it? Is it worth the upgrade cost? Should I be considering it? Those kind of questions. Um, the short answer, I think, let's just get to it, is yes. This thing is worth every penny uh, that Epson is charging for this unit. And when you see it in action, you'll understand why um, the value is there. It's a 2600 lumen projector. That's 100 lumens more than the 5040, which by itself does not sound like a whole lot, but that extra 100 lumens actually does make a difference when you're looking at this as being a living room piece outside of the dedicated home theater. Um, it also helps a lot with 3D. Now, I know a lot of people uh, have kind of fallen away from 3D, but there's still a lot of connoisseurs that love 3D, have great Blu-rays with 3D, and so you want to be able to watch this going forward. That extra 100 lumens makes a big difference in your 3D image and the brightness there. It also helps a ton with the HDR. And the HDR improvements in this unit are really what is worth considering this unit for. You'll see it uh, when we show it off um, in just a couple minutes. But that is one of the big improvements. Uh, as you know, on the 5040, it did support HDR, but it could tend to get muddy a little bit. There were some things they were working through. Um, it was acceptable on some things and not on others. This, you will see the HDR is fantastic. Uh, it looks best in a dedicated um, darkroom environment, like a, you know, a home theater where you can really control the lighting, but it's still very acceptable in a, you know, conditions where you have some control of ambient lighting, but not all of it. Uh, outside of that, this unit is basically 100% the same as far as casing and structure. Uh, it does have the 15 element lens, which is fantastic and really makes the picture quality sharp and crisp, makes that 4K enhancement really work well. Um, but as far as the dimensions go, the weight, it's exactly the same. This thing comes in around 25 pounds. Uh, the, the, the casing, the setup is exactly the same. You're switching this out for 50, 40. You could basically just drop it and replace it, and this thing is ready to go. It has motorized lens shift, motorized focus, motorized zoom, uh, 2.1. Um, all of the throw ranges are exactly the same. So this is a fantastic, very flexible installation piece. Uh, it, it can fit anywhere from you know 10 to 20 feet in your room, depending on the, size, on the size of screen that you have. One thing I do want to touch on that I feel is really important, especially when you're dealing with larger images. Uh, there's a lot of TVs out there that have great 4K content, UHD content, and even at 60, 70 inches, it looks fantastic. When you're talking about a big screen immersive image that you're gonna get with a projector, which is obviously what we all want, right? That's why we're getting them. Uh, when you're getting 120, 150 inches or more, as that image starts to scale out, artifacts that aren't as visible on a smaller screen start to become very visible. Uh, and those could be artifacts from streaming. Uh, pretty much everybody streams nowadays. You know, you're streaming your 4K content. It could be um, uh, banding. When you have color gradations from one to, to another, um, a lot of times when the image gets real big, you'll start to actually see those bands of color start to separate. The 12-bit uh, video processing in this unit really prevents a lot of that, so you don't see that. Everything is really smooth. As you know, if you've ever had an Epson or had a chance to look at an Epson, the 3 LCD uh, technology that it uses, the colors are just outstanding. It's 2600 lumens of brightness and 2600 lumens of color brightness. So you're not getting a degraded kind of a red signal or green signal or anything like that. It's just all bright and beautiful. And the UB that this uh, projector stands for, that's ultra black. And that is no joke. Um, the blacks on this are so rich and silky and deep and luxurious. It really makes the contrast and the color really pop. You're gonna be just blown away by this image, I, I have no doubt. 
So with all that to be said, let's take a look at the inputs on the back and let's check out this thing in motion. We are taking a look at the back of the inputs here and we do have some new inputs. Uh, we have an optical HDMI. Um, this is for, I believe this is for MHL powered content. So like if you have a streaming device like a Fire Stick or Roku or something, um, this is a powered output. So that means you don't have to run a big extension cord uh, from that streaming device out. So that's very handy. Uh, both of these HDMI's are 2.0 uh, compatible. So they're both gonna support 4K content. One of them is uh, 2.2 HDCP. So that will make sure that if you have any uh, restricted content, um, digital rights content, that it'll be play back through on here without any issues. Um, and then as we go through, we have a couple more USBs. Uh, one of these is a firmware and service port. Um, we have our LAN, our network capabilities. Um, so if you want to run it directly, uh, you have your PC inputs, and then your RS-232 controls, and then your 12-volt triggers, which will operate your screen and turn it on. This is your IR uh, thing right here, so this will catch it from the bottom as you're kind of using the remote. And you have your Kensington lock um, there. And then on the side, and here on the side, we have our hidden panel, which if you've ever been doing adjustments, um, you have easy access to all the main uh, menu features, um, so you can mouse around, find the source, and do those kind of things if you need to. But more than likely, you'll never do that because the remote is fantastic. This is one of uh, my favorite things. Well, it's a horrible say to say, but it, it's great when a company uh, provides a fantastic remote. Um, it's going to be hard to see in this light, but this does glow in the dark. Um, when you push a button, everything lights up. I'm not going to do it, unfortunately, because we have another Epson in here. Um, and it'll turn on and get really noisy, uh, but just trust me when I say it. Uh, there's your light switch, um, easy access to your sources. Uh, you have lens memory. I think you have 10 options for user lens memory. This is great if you're watching letterbox content and uh, you have a, a screen that uh, you know is larger than the image. You can change that depending on the content without going up and manually moving and fixing all the settings. You just push one thing and it just moves back and forth. It's great. Easy access to all the color modes and the image enhancement uh, options. Uh, there's your lens and focus options. It's just a great, fantastic, very easy to use uh, remote.